Greetings all, and welcome to this day of celebration. We are united to witness the marriage of Jess and John. We've been invited to share in the commitment they make to each other here today. They ask your blessing on this joyful occasion. If life has any meaning to us at all, it possesses it because of love. Love enriches our human experience. It is the reason for the peace in the family and the peace of peoples on earth. What defines Jess and John's love today will change and grow to new depth in the future. It takes three seconds to say I love you, but it can take a lifetime to show it. This ceremony is the celebration of a single stage in a much larger process that is a love between husband and wife. The promises made today and the ties that are bound here greatly strengthen your union. They will cross the years and the lives of each soul's growth. Do you seek to begin this ceremony? Yes. Excellent. The human soul shares characteristics with all things divine. It is the belief which assigns virtues to the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. Let us offer a traditional blessing in support of this ceremony. Blessed be this union with the gifts of, gifts of the east, communication of the heart, mind, and body. Fresh beginnings with the rising of each sun and the knowledge of growth found in the sharing of silence. Blessed be this union with the gifts of the South, warmth of hearth and home, the heat of the heart's passion and the light created both to lighten the darkest of times. Blessed be this union with the gifts of the West, with deep commitments of the lake, the swift excitement of the river, the refreshing cleansing of the rain and the all-encompassing passion of the sea. Blessed be the union of the gifts of the north, the firm foundation on which to build a fertility of the fields to enrich your lives and a stable home to which you may always return. Please turn and face each other and join both of each other's hands. John, will you cause her pain? No. Is that your intention? No. Jess, will you cause him pain? I may. Is that your intention? No. Will you both share each other's pain and seek to erase it? Yes. yes. And so the binding is made. You're already holding hands. If we can have the cord, please, Jackie. her laughter. Yes. Will both of you look for the brightness in life and the positive in each other? Yes. And so the binding is made. Jess, will you burden him? I may. Is that your intention? No. Will you burden her? I may. Is that your intention? No. Will you share the burdens of each so that your spirits may grow in this union? Yes. yes. Excellent. Will you share his dreams, Jess? Yes. Will you share her dreams, John? Yes. Will you dream together to create new shared realities? Yes. Excellent. The knots of this binding are not formed by these cords, but instead by your vows. Either of you may drop the cord, for always you will hold in your own hands the making or breaking of this union. Please untie the cords, Jack. Thank you. Excellent. And now if I can have you each hold one another's wedding ring for a moment, and we'll talk about the wedding rings. Throughout time, the wedding ring has been a symbol of unending love. Because like time, your rings have no beginning and no end. They're the emblem of eternity. They're also made of metals that are least likely to tarnish. These things symbolize the pledges that you just finished making to one another here this afternoon. But above all else, your wedding rings will now be an outward and visible sign signifying to all the uniting of this man and this woman in marriage. 
John, please place Jess's ring on her finger. Hold it there and repeat after me. Jess, I give you this ring. Jess, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And as a reminder. And as a reminder. That I have chosen you. That I have chosen you. To be the one. To, be the one. to share my life. To share my life. Can place it all the way on. Excellent. Jess, please place John's ring on his finger. Hold it there and repeat after me. That works. John, I give you this ring. John, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And as a reminder. As a reminder. That I have chosen you. Have chosen to be the one. To be the one. To share my life. To share my life. You can place it all the way on. Perfect. I'll have the two of you face me. And now a Shakespeare sonnet. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends when the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark. The looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark. Whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken? Love's not time's fool, though. Rosy lips and cheeks within the bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with this brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ nor no man ever loved. This sonnet defines love in its ideal form. Love is not changeable. It is a fixed guiding star unshaken by tempest, but more specifically, it is an essence not subject to change in the passage of time. We call on the spirit of love that Jess and John may know great love together and live in the desire to always support each other in positive and uplifting ways. May their home be a haven where they strengthen one another in sorrow, share with one another in gladness, and be companions to each other in times of silence. May they be united not in word, an outward form alone, but in the presence in the hearts of each as husband and wife. And guess what? You may celebrate with a kiss. Congratulations, you are married. Yeah. They have done it. <laughs> one more kiss, one more kiss. Hold that kiss, baby. <laughs>